Hey everyone, good afternoon and thank you for tuning in to Northumberland Zoo on YouTube. My name is Maxine and I'm the curator here at the zoo. And today we're going to be looking at our honey extraction process. So those of you may know that we have our own apiary here at the zoo. We have got six hives at the moment. They're all just behind me. We're just over next to the snow leopards. Um, and this year uh, we had a very prosperous year and we produced over 50 kilos of honey. And what I want to show you today is the process that we have to go through in order to extract that honey from the actual frames themselves. So it's quite a complicated process. Um, unless you've done beekeeping before, it's, uh, you know, it's not straightforward, but these are what we're working with. These are the frames that go inside of the hives and it's trying to get the honey out of those without, with the least amount of waste and obviously uh, not upsetting the bees too much. So, I teamed it with our beekeepers and they were the ones that were in charge of the whole process and I'll explain it to you from the beginning. So let's start with the basics. Why do bees make honey? Honey is a product that they create for the winter so that they can last throughout the entire winter and not worry about not having any food. So they store it up throughout the year so that they can eat it all throughout the winter. So beekeepers have tapped into this and they know that they can obviously extract this honey when it comes to the autumn, but you have to give the bees something back in return. So we do give them fondant and that's the alternative that they can eat throughout the winter while we take the honey. The whole process of creating honey is absolutely mind-blowing and it can be described within four steps. So obviously the first step is when the bees go out to the flowers and collect the nectar. And when they get back to the hive, they pass the nectar between the young house bees and they pass it mouth to mouth. And part of this process is each bee will partially digest the nectar. And when they do that, they're slowly converting it into honey, which is the basic elements of glucose and fructose. And as this nectar keeps getting passed around, the moisture content is also reduced from 70% down to around 20%. And then it gets put in the actual cells in the super, which are the frames that are in the very top of the hive where the honey is stored. Then the last part before they seal it off is they ripen the honey and they do this by drying it out. And what they'll do is the bees will all be hanging out in the hive and they'll all be flapping their wings and creating a lovely warm breeze and that will reduce the moisture content down in the honey cells even further. And once the moisture content is just right, then the bees will actually form a wax seal, a little wax cap over that cell to seal it all in. And that's because the last thing they want is any air or any moisture getting in, because if it does, then the honey will spoil. So these little wax caps are the first thing that we have to deal with in the process of honey extraction. So we've come down to the ATAC community hall at Widrington and rented out the kitchen so that we can do our honey extraction. Our beekeepers took out all of the frames from our apiary, from all the different hives that we have, brought them down here to process them and get the honey out. Let's go see what they're doing. The first thing we have to do is decap all the honey frames so that we can start putting them in the spinner and sucking all the honey out. So it's a big process, takes a long time, but the product that comes out the end is amazing. And you'll be able to see the Northumberland Zoo honey in our gift shop very soon. Using a specially designed tool, the beekeepers carefully remove the wax caps that are on the honey cells. What I tend to do is to just try and get as thin as I can. Okay. Using this, I can see. This leaves the cells wide open so that they're ready for the next stage of extraction. Nothing is wasted in this process and all of these wax caps can then be melted down and used to make beeswax candles. I kind of thought that when you, when you uncapped it that it would just pour out. It's clearly just not. It depends, you know, there'll be some honeys that it does. I mean, these have been dripping, mm. you know? Yeah, but not um, like, but not, not as much as I thought they would. No. If you want that to happen, you would have to warm it up. Heat it up, and yeah. And you don't really, nah. you know, want to do that unless you really have to. Now that all of the wax caps have been removed, now it's time to move over onto the honey extractor. 
and it's based on the principle of a spin drive. So here we have the control panel um, and then this controls the speed. So with this, we'll just check it's working first, nice and slow to start with. And then we get it faster and faster. So it's a really good high spin speed and it's nice and stable. Just like a spin drive. frames go in, you can see at the bottom there's a fixture that holds them, that they, they sit on. So we have it loaded with six frames and this is a tangential uh, spinner. So it means that uh, basically the, uh, the honey gets thrown outwards, so it gets thrown out from one side. Um, so what we do is we do one side first slowly, then we turn the frames round the other way so that then it does the other side slowly and then we speed it up and we do the other side fast and then turn them back the other way again to do the other side fast. So uh, we'll give it a go. See it's sticking to the sides of the, uh, the spinner and it starts to form a pool and then we've got that action. Once all of the frames have been spun on both sides and all the honey sitting at the bottom of the honey extractor, there's a little tap where you can actually pour all the honey out. We have um, a, a rough filter and then we have a very fine filter there. So put one inside the other and this is designed to go on to different size buckets. Nice. And you pop it under the tap and then we allow the honey to pour out. Yes. Oops. You can see the honey coming out with the, the wax bits uh, that are in it and the filters will take out the wax. Once this is done, we're ready for jarring. It's a long job, that one, isn't it? You me thinking it'd be like, oh. Straight out. Well, if you if you have a proper machine, <laughs> you do. But. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed that little update and you learned a lot about the process of making honey. Did you know that in their lifetime, one honeybee will only produce one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey? It's such a small amount. And in order to make a pound jar of honey, it takes up to 25,000 foraging trips and they fly up to about 50,000 miles to do that. So almost two trips around the world with bees to make one jar of honey unbelievable so if you've got any questions or comments about bees drop them in the comment box below 
And of course, don't forget, you can book a beekeeping experience here at Northumberland Zoo if you would like to dive in and learn all about the world of bees from one of our skilled beekeepers. Next week, why don't you tune in because it's going to be super exciting. We're going to be announcing a new species. Now, just a few hints here. We are going to be the second collection in the UK to hold this critically endangered species. It's very exciting, a first for Northumberland, and you'll see all about it next week. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. Um, comment below with any ideas of what you think it might be. Anyways, we'll see you next week.